Good morning and welcome to St. Austin Catholic Church and a special good morning to those joining us for our live stream. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father Rich Andre and he's being assisted by Deacon Billy Atkins. Our Mass today is being offered for the people. The worship aid contains the readings and the songs for our liturgy and we encourage you to participate as you are able. For your safety and for the respect of those around you, please make sure your face mask is on and that it covers your nose and mouth at all times. Only the ministers at the altar can remove ours. And now I invite you to stand and in a way that is comfortable for you, please greet those around you. Our opening song today is Come to the Water. reading and our opening hymn today both make a pretty clear connection with the sacrament of baptism and our gospel passage is connected pretty closely to the sacrament of communion but in this time when more than 10 times as many people well I probably actually today more than 20 times as many people will participate in this mass online than in person it doesn't seem like a time to focus on sacraments Instead, we'll dive into our second reading, in which Paul asks the Romans, what will separate us from the love of Christ? In this time when we feel tragically separated from one another, let us celebrate that we still believe that nothing can separate us from God. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. to 
God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. to all peoples and will together from them one family for yourself. Fill all hearts with the fire of your love and kindle in us a desire for the just advancement of our neighbor that through the good things which you richly bestow upon all every human person may be brought to perfection, every division may be removed, and equity and justice may be established in human society. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying, without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things nor future things, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then Jesus said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last weekend was an extra special one here at St. Austin. Paolo Puccini was ordained to the priesthood, and he joins Chuck and me on the St. Austin staff full-time. When there are so few Paulist priests to be spread among our ministry commitments around the country, I'm grateful that our community leadership is investing extra manpower into St. Austin at this time. If the development project continues moving forward, most of Chuck's time will be consumed by meetings. Paolo and I will be attending to most of the pastoral needs of the parishioners and hospital patients. Of course, in this time of pandemic, it's extremely difficult for Paolo to get to know all of you and for all of you to get to know him. 
Last weekend, people organized three creative events to help begin the process. An outdoor reception for the 75 or so guests at the ordination. A worldwide virtual reception that included congratulatory videos from some of St. Austin's parishioners and a drive-by parade in which members of the St. Austin community could receive a blessing from Paolo. It was a real shot in the arm for St. Austin's and for the Paulists. But that joyous weekend has heightened our sense of what we've been missing during this time of pandemic. Yes, we have sacraments for those who feel safe enough to come to church. Yes, we have our widely watched online masses. And in any given week, lots of small groups are meeting via video conference. But it's not the same sense of connection we have when hundreds of people gather in one space to celebrate liturgy together. And we don't gather physically. We can't, when we don't gather physically, we can't have those impromptu conversations over coffee, donuts, and tacos. Instead of inviting everyone to come without money or price, we're encouraging people to stay home. Even if we could find a place for 20,000 people to gather, because here at St. Austin's, we always count the women and children, even with proper social distancing, we couldn't safely pass the bread and the fish to one another. But we're in the fifth month of this extraordinary time. We need to figure out additional creative ways to reconnect as the body of Christ. We'd like your ideas on this. If you go to the very bottom of the St. Austin homepage, you'll find a place, brand new, to send us feedback. It's easier for us to collect all this information there than if you call or email or send private Facebook messages to various staff members. So please, brainstorm with us about how we can celebrate that nothing can separate us from one another, even when we're forced to keep our distance from one another. Which brings us to our second reading. After spending years crisscrossing the eastern half of the Roman Empire, Paul had dreams of venturing further west. So he asked St. Phoebe to deliver a letter that he wrote to the best-known community of Christians already established in the Western Empire, the Christians in Rome. Unlike Paul's others, le other letters, which were written to people he knew well in response to specific incidents in their communities, Romans has a different character. Paul tries to impress the Romans with the wisdom he has gained from proclaiming the gospel over two decades. He hopes that they will accept him as one of their own. He seeks their support in sending him on to Spain. He wants this community, presumably made up of both Gentiles and Jews, to contribute to the collection he's taking up for the impoverished Jewish Christian community in Jerusalem. Therefore, Romans is not really a letter, but a treatise on the Christian faith. It is often called Paul's Gospel. Paul begins Romans by explaining that everyone, Jews and Greeks alike, are part of God's family. There's nothing wrong with performing the precepts of the Jewish law, Paul argues, but we are not saved through the law itself. God promised Abraham that he would bless all nations through his descendants, and God made that promise before he established any rules for Abraham to follow. God didn't give up on the promise with, when both Gentiles and Jews rejected the covenant. God fulfilled his promises through Jesus, a direct descendant of Abraham. After all that, we reach the midpoint of Paul's magnum opus with the beautiful lyrical passage we heard today. And even though Paul is writing for very different purposes and in very different circumstances, his point is still relevant to us today. Our desire to reconnect with one another as the St. Austin community is the same holy longing for relationship, for belonging within the family of God. I'll change a few of Paul's words and read the passage again. 
I am convinced that neither COVID-19, nor limited testing, nor hospital overcapacity, nor loneliness, nor the lack of novelty in our day-to-day -day lives, nor our worries about the upcoming school year, nor government leaders, nor housing insecurity, nor an economic recession, nor any other circumstance will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do we need to make public demonstrations to one another that we're still connected as members of St. Austin Catholic Parish? Maybe not but some creative celebrations wouldn't hurt. When we reassure ourselves that we're connected to one another as the body of Christ, we reassure ourselves that we're connected to the love of God. Once again, if you have ideas about how we can better connect with one another during this pandemic, please use the website to send us feedback. Thank you. Together, let us stand and proclaim what we believe. I believe in God, the Father of all, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the cross of God, was crucified and died in His earth. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended. With one voice, let us offer our prayers to God, trusting him to provide for our needs. For the church, that we may welcome all who hunger for meaning and purpose into our assembly, where they can be nourished by the word of God and the bread of life, we pray to the Lord. For world leaders, that they might find ways to bring an end to wars, violence, and nuclear threats, and work to promote the peace and development of all nations. We pray to the Lord. For all who are hungry, facing famine, are undernourished or struggling with failed crops, that God will ease their suffering and touch the hearts of many to share with them. We pray to the Lord. For all who work in or support food pantries, that their efforts may show the love and compassion of God to hungry children and families, we pray to the Lord. For all parents and students, as the school year approaches, that God will give them wisdom and insight as they review their options and choose the best way to learning this year, we pray to the Lord. For Joan Bauer, Shannon Maynard, Betty Callis, Jabril Ars Castro, and Dr. Charlie Coleman Sr. Especially those who are sick with COVID, that God will relieve their pain, restore them to wholeness, and guide all who are caring for them. We pray to the Lord. For Liotta Murray and all who have died. that they may enjoy eternal rest in God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord. O oh God, 
as we come faithfully seeking our spiritual sustenance, we are fed and nourished by the words and sacrifice of Christ. Grant us wisdom, courage, and fortitude to carry you with us to feed the souls of all we meet. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First of all, thank you to all of you who have been faithful in continuing your support or even increasing it. Thank you, thank you. Your support is very much appreciated. For those attending Mass today, there is no passing of the basket. You are not obligated to attend Mass on Sundays during this time of pandemic. We will continue our schedule of broadcast Masses at 8 o'clock a.m. Monday through Saturday and at 8.45 a.m. on Sunday, even if the majority of people here today are regular attenders of the 7.30 Mass. Please join us live on the St. Austin website or our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, and you can watch the broadcast there later as well if that's more convenient. A big thank you to everyone involved in last weekend's festivities around Paolo's ordination. It was quite the effort uh, coordinating work being done in Michigan, Florida, New York, here are the people on the staff, the Chancery Office, other secular groups helping us, and just an amazing St. Austin Parish staff who just made this a work of love and dedication. They really, we are so grateful to all of them. St. Austin graduates and professionals, known as GAP, is for persons in their 20s and 30s. We are still meeting on Sunday evenings online. Our topic tonight is digital ecclesiology. We're going to be joined by Dr. Heidi Campbell, a professor of communications at Texas A&M. Her research focuses on the intersection of digital and mobile media, religion and digital cultures. She is the creator of the recent Holy Pandemic Facebook group that shares memes about religion and the pandemic. Join the GAP Facebook page for more information to participate. Information on that is available in the bulletin. And there is lots of other information in our bulletin. It, you can see it online or get it in the back here, or check out our website, stainaustin.org. We are adding new information every week. It is worth checking out. We continue to pray for you. Please keep us in your prayers during this unusual time. Let us pray for each other's health, wisdom, and patience. brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, through praise and your Lord, for our faith in your O Lord, in your mercy, hear the prayers of those who cry to you, and as you receive your church's offering, grant that all may be filled with the spirit of belonging to your divine family so that with inequalities overcome by love, one family of peoples may be formed in your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes its pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany us by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead us along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. the human race, and you always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until we come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now, and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Joe our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, including those who seek you with a sincere heart, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, 
we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Paul, St. Austin, St. Mary of Magdala, St. Phoebe, St. Peter Claver, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the church peace and unity in accordance with your will. We ask this, Lord Jesus, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
The protocol for receiving communion in this time of pandemic, we ask you to make a single file line in the center aisle, keeping at least six feet of space between households. Please come forward with your mask covering your nose and mouth, receive communion in your hands, and then step off at least six feet to the side before removing your mask and consuming the host. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Having been fed with the one bread by which you constantly renew the human family, we pray, O Lord, that from participation in this sacrament of unity, we may draw a love strong and pure to help peoples in their development and prompted by love to fulfill what justice requires. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.